Golden State still looking strong. Change of venue, Golden State still playing just as well. They topped the Mavericks 109-100 in Game 3 of the Western Conference Finals. Luka Doncic, a game-high 40 points, 11 rebounds, still not enough. For Golden State, four of their starters scored in double digits. Back with us to break down this game, our NBA insider, Bill Ryder, at American Airlines Center, took off, took a little bit, but Golden State soaring to a Game 3 win. Pre-game, Bill, you told us you weren't sure which Golden State team we'd see. Is this the entitled team, a team that kind of likes to play with their food? How are you classifying this one, and well, how did they get the job done? A little more focus. I mean, there you <laughs> saw Steve Kerr at the end of that game in that fourth quarter as Dallas cut that lead a little bit, getting animated, getting frustrated. But what I saw is the best version in the end of, of this of this Warriors team. I mean, Dallas has a top six defense. They have in Luka Doncic, literally one of the best players we've ever seen beginning their postseason career. And the Warriors absolutely cruised. I know the series isn't over, but it's basically over. No team has ever come back from a 3-0 deficit in the NBA playoffs. And what you see from Golden State is a team that looks every bit like the championship caliber dominating squad we saw back in those dynasty years. CBS Sports HQ literally just tweeting Warriors taking the 3-0 lead. Teams that are up in an NBA playoff series with that record are 146-0. So uh, tough sledding there for Dallas Mavericks, but an incredible performance from Luka Doncic. 40 points, 11 assists. Early on, Dallas had us thinking maybe they could get this thing done, but what changed for them on Sunday night, Bill? Yeah, I think, the re I think there's two realities. One is that Luka Doncic, if you're talking about championship aspirations, making and winning NBA Finals, Luka Doncic simply does not have enough help. And not to pick on a particular guy, but Reggie Bullock's a great example. I mean, he could not buy a bucket in this game. You saw multiple Mavs, whether those guys that had a pretty good box score on the night or those that didn't, looking really hesitant and just overwhelmed. Like, like I've seen LeBron teammates in the past be by playing with Luka and not living up to those expectations. So part one, he doesn't have the supporting cast that he needs. And part two, this Warriors team is a whole different reality in the playoffs than even the Phoenix Suns who won, what, 62, 64 games in the regular season. You put together this Mavs team and the experience they have and the fact that Luka doesn't have enough help and you saw an overmatched basketball team even at home. Golden State is 14-1 in playoff series under Steve Kerr when taking a 2-0 lead. Now they're just that one win away from returning to the NBA Finals for the first time since making it five straight from 2015 to 2019. Bill, do you see Golden State closing this thing out on Tuesday night, or can the Mavericks muster enough to live for another game? Eric Casillas has taught me to always bet on the gentleman's sweep, a situation where it's 3-0, right? Let the other team kind of have that, that win at home and then go back to your, your home fan base. But I think there's a real chance the Warriors do, and not just because we talked about, Sherry, before the game, this notion of Golden State not messing around with Luka Doncic and how talented he is, but I just think you saw outside of Luka, a lot of those Mavericks players give up the ghost in this game. Their body language, their lack of effort, particularly in the fourth quarter, just the looks on their faces as that game clock clicked down to zero. They look beaten to me, and I certainly think it's very possible the Warriors will put an end to this series and to the Mavs' hopes and dreams in a couple nights. So it's not too soon to look ahead, you say, and uh, put Golden State in for the final. Is there one matchup from the Eastern Conference that you think is a better matchup, even though Miami now leading Boston two games to one? I'm now going to violate the, the only rule of sports writing and sports media, and that is never talk about booking your travel in advance, <laughs> but I'm literally booking my travel when we're done talking here to San Francisco. So when the 3-0 comeback happens, Dallas fans, you can, you can thank this guy. For breaking, for breaking that rule. I mean, the matchup that I really want is the Boston Celtics, and I'm not sure we're going to get Boston. I mean, I really like Miami. I've said all along, I think that that Eastern Conference Finals will come down to the wire. Obviously, the heat are up right now. But in terms of their athleticism and their ability to play defense on remarkably talented scores, and we saw this against Brooklyn, we know Boston can do that. They've got the offensive firepower. I would love to see the Celtics try to do in a different way to Steph Curry and to Klay Thompson and to Jordan Poole and on this night to Andrew Wiggins, all that offensive depth. I'd love to see Boston take on that challenge the, the way they did against Brooklyn. All right, Bill Ryder there with the announcer jinx, you might call it. We appreciate your insight. Thank you.
Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.